What a wonderful way to start worship. Thank you. Good morning. May the joy of worshiping and serving our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer be yours this day. Welcome to the worship of St. Paul's United Methodist Church, a compassionate community led and transformed by the Spirit. I am Reverend Becky Sweet, and I am pleased to serve as the senior pastor here and our worship leadership for whom we are grateful includes our ushers and hospitality ministers, Lorraine Miner, our liturgist, Michael Culotta, our camera operator, Daniel Kingsley, our substitute technical director, Molly McMillan, our pianist, Emily Preston, our choir director and song leader, Cynthia Lunine and Andy Merrill will be bringing us our special music today. Maud Rith, our church administrative assistant and communications coordinator. Jamie Breedlove Crouch, our prayer leader and loving care ministries coordinator, and the rest of the staff as listed in the bulletin. I extend a warm welcome to those who are visiting with us today, as well as to those who worship with us regularly. If you are visiting and in this room, you may be given a Connect card, and we would ask that you complete that so that I may send you a note thanking you for worshiping with us on this day. And if you are worshiping on Facebook Live, I invite you to scroll down and leave a comment there or if you are participating in worship via our live streaming, you may scroll down on the worship uh, web page and fill out the virtual friendship pad that you will find there. Also on that um, worship web page, you will find links to our bulletin and hymns for today in case you would like to access those. Please note our COVID protocols as listed on the back of the bulletin. Per the recommendations of the Tompkins County Health Department, masks are now optional in, when indoors. But if you are unmasked, we ask that you just sing softly in order to cut down on the number of aerosols that you are sharing with the rest of us in the room. The additional candle on the altar reminds us to pray for peace in Ukraine and to uplift the people of Ukraine, Russia, and all of the surrounding countries in our prayers each and every day. Today is the third Sunday after Pentecost, and we have a special speaker today, Reggie Carpenter. Reggie Carpenter has been utilizing the power of stories to motivate, inspire, energize, and focus individuals in corporate, academic, and nonprofit settings. Her keynotes uplift people as they are reminded of the tremendous impact each individual has within an organization. Reggie's keynotes are noted for their insight, humor, and effectiveness. Reggie is the founder of Stories with Spirit, a creative initiative dedicated to bringing songs of joy and stories of hope to grieving children and the people who love and care for them in homes, hospices, and hospitals. I look forward to what Reggie will be sharing with us today. I know her presence and all that she offers will be a blessing. So now as we continue to worship together, I invite you to share with one another signs of the peace and love of Christ. If you are able, you may rise and extend a holy wave or a sign from my heart to yours as we worship. And if you would turn and face the cameras in the back of the sanctuary, let's extend to those worshiping with us from home the peace and love of Christ. Thank you, and you may be seated. 
we will continue to focus our minds and hearts on God's love as Molly offers to us the centering music. If you are able, would you please rise for the call to worship? In caring and compassion, God's arms hold us when we are weak. With divine generosity, God shares all creation with us. Let us join our hearts, hands, and voices with people the world over. Our hymn of praise is God is Here, found on page 660 in the United Methodist Hymnal.
seated. Would you please pray with me? In the midst of turbulent lives and turbulent times, we gather in the name of Jesus, the risen one, to proclaim the wonder of your stone-moving love. We celebrate the goodness of life and the world, all persons' goodness and diversity, all relationships that promotes love, all love that is caring and outreaching, all justice for human rights, all churches who are reconciling, all gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender persons, all borders without walls or death, all nations that lay down their weapons, all public education with human freedom, all environmental care to conserve the earth, all justice without the death penalty, gun controls, choices for women, health care for all, all children loved and not abused. We seek to be a sacred, loving presence of justice to all of God's children. Amen. Good morning, everyone. The first scripture I'm going to read today is from Psalms 34, 17 through 20. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the heartbroken, brokenhearted, and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord rescues them from them all. He keeps all their bones not one of them will be broken. This is from John 14, 23 through 27. Jesus answered him, those who love me will keep my word and my father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. <clears throat> I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all I have said to you Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be broken, and do not let them be afraid. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thank Thanks be to God. I'd like to invite the children to come for the children's message. Come on, Henry. <laughs> notice anything different about these fingers? What's different? They have, they have bands on them. These are twisty ties. You know, my grandmother used to tell me when I was little that she would wrap string on her fingers to remind her of things that she needed to remember. I was never able to tie the string on with just one hand, but tie, putting twisties on is a little bit easier. So this twisty is to remind me to take my water bottle home with me this afternoon. 
This twisty is to remind me that I want to go down to the Commons this afternoon for the Fiber Arts Festival. And this twisty is to remind me that I have work to do before I go to bed tonight, so I had better get it done. So these twisties help me to remember. Some of the people that work around here know that sometimes I walk around just with fingers in the air when I have things to remember. Right, Maud? Right, Jamie? <laughs> because I forget things, and so I have to make up lists a lot. Sometimes I make up lists on pieces of paper. Sometimes I put lists on my phone. If you look in my phone on my notepad, I have a list for the grocery store, a list for the dollar store, a list for Walgreens, all these lists. So I don't forget things because I tend to forget. Now, we just heard from the Bible that Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to us to help us to remember the things that Jesus taught us because Jesus knew that some of us, like me, would forget from time to time. Do you know what some of those things might be that the Holy Spirit will remind us, something that Jesus taught us? You don't know? Well, I'll tell you, Jesus taught us to love one another. And sometimes we need to be reminded of that. Jesus taught us to care for each other, every other, every person. And sometimes we need to be reminded of that because sometimes it would be a lot easier not to care. So we need to be reminded. Is there anything that you need to be reminded of today? No? You have a young, sharp brain, don't you? You remember all those things. I need to have you around with me more often so you can help me remember. I used to ask my kids to remind me to do this or remind me to do that because I knew they would remember even when I didn't, even when I didn't put a twisty tie on my finger. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Spirit is still with us to remind us to love and care for each other in the way that Jesus taught us. So we have a backup plan in case we forget. All right. Let's pray together and ask everyone out there to pray with us too, okay? Thank you, God, for sending to us the Holy Spirit. May we listen to the Spirit's reminders so we can live like Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for coming up today, honey.
Thank you so much, Cynthia and Andy. And it's my privilege to present to you Reggie Carpenter. Come on up here. Thank you. Good morning. Thanks, Becky. Oh, what a pleasure to be here. I was scheduled to come in May to deliver a, a Mother's Day uh, talk. And um, as you know, May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and it occurs to me that it's no, no uh, accident that Mother's Day occurs during Mental Health Awareness Month. And so as I was sitting over there, I was thinking that uh, I would tell that story, but with the music today and the wonderful uh, passages, I think I'm going to switch horses midstream and tell you a story about growing up in my small town. The water is wide made me think of this because I grew up on the St. Lawrence River in the heart of the Thousand Islands in a very small town called Clayton, New York. I grew up Roman Catholic. Clayton is a Catholic town, really huge Catholic town. And uh, as I've gotten older, I, uh, I've really cherished being able to see all of the angels and the hierarchies that live within that theology. And so today I'm just going to share you a little, ex a little uh, story about miracles. Well, it was 2 o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon when Mrs. Kinney, my fifth grade teacher, announced to my class, those of you going to religious education may be excused. Two-thirds of my class stood up and gathered their things, and then we joined all the other students going to religious education on the sidewalk outside of Clayton Central School in my hometown, Clayton, New York. Now, true to life, we divided by denomination. The Protestants walked neatly off in one direction, while us scrappy Catholic kids kind of meandered down James Street until we got to St. Mary's Catholic Church Convent and School. Now, St. Mary's Catholic, the Sisters of the Holy Cross, had come from Toronto, and they were French-speaking, as was most of the original citizens of Clayton, and now they had uh, converted to English speaking to help us. They took it as their sacred duty to put the fear of God into us, and by God, they did. They told us if we had impure thoughts, our bodies would be covered with a pox. They said that during communion, if our teeth touched the host, they would spontaneously bleed. And that was like eating God. <gasps> and every single Bible story they told us, somebody got their eyes gouged out. Come, ye little children, and get your eyes gouged out. This was classic. Catholicism. But this was the year in 1968 when everything would change in the Catholic Church. It was the year of Second Vatican II. Hundreds and hundreds of years of magnificent organ and choral music was now replaced with three chords on the folk guitar. The, the nuns no longer were named after the male saints. Now they could take female names. And our catechism could now be taught by lay people. This year, Mrs. Hunt, my neighbor, was going to be my catechism teacher. And my father said, well, she's a pretty good egg for a convert. So I walked up the wooden stairs and into my classroom. I took the desk next to the water, next to the window, so I could look out at the river. And I started doing homework in my favorite subject, daydreaming. I was interrupted only when Mrs. Hunt asked me to read aloud from the Bible, Isaiah 46. Wherever the river runs, there will be legions of fish. 
the salt water will be made fresh and all life will grow wherever the river runs then there will be new life and then she proceeded to tell us the story of the loaves and the fishes now mrs hunt was not brought up as a catholic and so her story of the loaves and the fishes was a little different a little enthusiastic she said that jesus was really a chatterbox and that once you got him going you could hardly shut him up one time he was standing on a mount and he started preaching and all these people came about 5,000 people came and everyone was really enthusiastic and Jesus kept going on and on and on and on and finally one of the apostles comes up to him and says hey Jesus could you wind it up these people have got to get going home it's getting late there's thieves on the road and besides we don't have enough food to feed everybody and Jesus says uh, well what do you got Oh, we got a couple fish. We got a couple loaves of bread. Bring it to me. And then the miracle happens. A few fish become many fish. A few loaves of bread become thousands of loaves of bread. It's a miracle. And then she says to us, children, never stop believing in miracles. And nobody's eyes got gouged out. Well, the year rolled on, and Mrs. Hunt began preparing us for the resurrection of Jesus from the tomb. And as she was preparing us for that, the St. Lawrence River was undergoing a resurrection of its own. Now the giant slabs of ice, the ice floes, were crashing into one another as spring was coming. The old jalopy somebody had driven out into the channel had fallen through the ice, and it was officially spring. And the leaves returned to the trees, the scent returned to the air, and the worms made pilgrimages across James Street just because they could. And while we were preparing for the miracle of Jesus rising from the dead, my father began preparing for his own true miracle, practicing his own real religion, bullhead fishing. Now, down south, they call bullhead catfish because of the whiskers, but up north, we call them bullhead because of the horns. If you catch a bullhead and you don't kind of Put your hands so that the, you have to smooth back the horns. Those horns will poke you in your palm. They're filled with poison, and it hurts. Now, the bullhead is a noble fish. It's got gray speckled on the top and then a yellow line in the middle and a white underbelly. It's got no scales. And the bullhead is a fish you only want to eat in early spring because it's a bottom feeder. And in the middle of the summer, they're big. They taste like mud. But in the spring, their flesh is tender and sweet. There will be swarms of spawning bullhead on the first full moon after the spring equinox and that year it's going to be on a Thursday night now the only ones who want to go fishing with my dad are me and my sister Mary Mary is four years older than me she is my best friend so we my father tells us that we are in charge of the worms we are going to go over, we're going to go night crawling at the Turcotte's house. They got the best worms in town, nice and big and fat. So Mary is in charge of the flashlight. <clears throat> she runs out. It's a Thursday night, and there's just been a light rain. I cannot find my shoes, so I run out barefoot, chasing after her. We get over to the Turcotte's house. She's way ahead of me, over by the stink bomb tree, when I stand on something big and round and wet. <gasps> oh, man, this is a huge worm. Oh, no, this isn't a worm. This, this is a snake. Oh, yeah. I'm standing, oh, it's just a little garter snake. Don't be silly. Oh, no. It's probably not a garter snake. No, it's, 
It's probably a rattlesnake. I've never seen a rattlesnake around here, but this, no, it's, it's probably a boa constrictor. Oh, oh no, oh no. Mary runs over to me. What is the matter with you, Slowpoke? She points the flashlight at my toes. Mary, I'm standing in an anaconda. It's going to kill me if I move. You're standing on a garden hose, stupid. <laughs> so we start night crawling. Now, I don't know when the last time it was that you went night crawling, but you can't just pull a worm out of the earth. You've got to coax that puppy. You've got to talk to it. You've got to promise it. You've got to pull and release. You've got to pull and release and stretch and release, and then out it comes intact. A broken worm will do you no good. So I got this worm, and we drop it into our previously prepared coffee can filled with wet, shredded newspaper. And by the time it's completely full, we are ready to go bullheading. Now, we go back home. My dad has got everything ready. He's got it in the red, rusted Bonneville station wagon with the wood paneling duct taped to the side. Now, we have got uh, bamboo poles with sinkers, not bobbers like when you go looking for perch because bullhead are bottom feeders, and they are a fish sadly in need of orthodoncy. They have got a wicked underbite. You drop your ball of worms down to the bottom. They come up and scoop it up, and then they're yours. So we've got the Coleman lantern. We've got a picnic basket filled with bologna and cheese and butter sandwiches wrapped in wax paper. We have got a flask of jello juice, and we have got a flask of something else. That's my father's. So it's 10 o'clock, and the moon is shining brightly, and my father says it's time to go. So Mary and I get in the back seat. My father pulls out onto that dark Mary Street, and then he points the car down towards the municipal dock. We hang a left on Alexandria Street, then we hang a right on the Cape Road, and we're going along, and then he takes a left on Frontenac Springs. Frontenac Springs turns into Crystal Springs. Crystal Springs is going to take us to our favorite fishing hole, French Creek. So Mary and I are yucking it up in the back. She says to me, Hey, wretch, close your eyes and open your mouth. I'm not doing that. The last time I did that, you spit in my mouth. I'm not going to spit in your mouth. Now, come on, close your eyes and open your mouth. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. We were at the drive-in, and you told me to do it, and I trusted you, and you spit in my mouth. Reg, I'm not going to spit in your mouth. Well, okay, if you don't want a piece of candy. You got candy? Yeah. And if you close your eyes and open your mouth, I'll give you a piece. Oh, Mary knows I'll do anything for candy. You know, worms do not taste as bad as you think. My father yells at us, be quiet back there. You'll wake up the fish. Well, by now, we're on the gravel road that's going to take us to French Creek. And our tires are popping on the gravel. My father has turned off the headlights, and just the moon is guiding us to our destination. We get to French Creek, and we gather up all of our stuff. And instead of slamming the door shut, we just click it ever so softly. We walk through the wet grass. Our socks and shoes are completely soaked. We don't care. We get to the edge of the creek, and my father lays everything out. And then we sit down, and he starts to smoke. And we sit and we listen to the sounds of the St. Lawrence River in spring. <laughs> We hear, oh, 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 oh. And then we hear 
the tires of our neighbors, they're popping on the gravel. We hear the clicks of their doors. And pretty soon, there's 15, 20 blankets all laid out along the creek. And the moon is shining, and the creek is black. And then we hear the sounds of the wax paper being uncrinkled, and now we can smell the bologna and cheese and butter sandwiches and the jello and the whiskey. And we can hear the Coleman lanterns hissing. <sighs> and then we hear the sound we've been waiting for, that sound that only comes one night a year. It's the bullhead. There are thousands of spawning bullhead, thousands of bullhead crammed into the creek. So many bullhead that their tails are flipping up out of the water as they climb over one another to get to their spawning grounds. And that's all we need. All of us stand up, we grab our poles, we pull it back and thunk. And in minutes, we are reeling in one bullhead after another. And by midnight, our picnic baskets are full. By 1 o'clock, all of those fish are cleaned and put in the freezer, and we're asleep in bed. The next morning, Mary and I are so tired. But it's a school day, so we have to get up and go. We got something to look forward to. It's uh, Friday night fish fry at the Fireman's Hall. Uh, um, $5 all you can eat. Kids under 12 get in free. So we go with the whole family, all seven of us. We go down and we sit at the long tables. As soon as we sit down, some firefighter brings us a huge plate a bullhead. Now, like I told you, they got no scales, and they always, they're skeletons stay in place when you eat them. So we can just pick them up and put it down. And once the plate is empty, you just raise your hand, they bring you another plate. The only things on the table are the fish and a loaf of bread. Sitting across from me is Mrs. Hunt, my catechism teacher. I look at her and I say, Mrs. Hunt, hey. Isn't this just like the story of the loaves and the fishes? And she says, Regina, all of life is a miracle. Thank you, Reggie. A good story is a joy to be remembered. Thank you so much. Our hymn of response may be found in the Faith We Sing hymnal on page 2120, Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness. Thank you. 
may be seated. Today in our prayers, I will be using lyrics from a song. The name of it is Brighter Days, and it's, the author is Blessing Offer. Blessing Offer was born in Nigeria with almost complete blindness in one eye. His parents, in the hopes that they could help him save some of his vision, made the gut-reaching decision to allow a six-year-old blessing to move to America to live with an uncle to be able to get help at Yale Medical Center. We can all imagine what it had to be, how hard it had to be for his parents to make that decision to send him off. Blessing went through countless surgeries on his eyes in the first few years in America. One day, playing in the backyard with his friends when he was 10 years old, he was hit in a vulnerable part of his good eye and lost his vision completely. Blessing was afraid that his family would think of him as a failure for losing his vision after all the sacrifices that had been made on his behalf. Instead of succumbing to darkness, Blessing began to lean increasingly on other skills and discovered his ability to connect with others through music. Now that you have a little backstory about Blessing, I think we'll be able to connect a little better with the songs, lyrics. Let's begin our prayer time together. Dear loving, forgiving, sustaining God, Today, some of us come before you with heavy hearts, carrying the weight of this week's events in our country and events that we have experienced in our own lives. Sometimes we feel that there is darkness all around us and the pain seems too much to bear. But as Christians, we can have faith and know there's going to be some brighter days. I swear that love will find you in your pain. I feel it in me like the beating of life in my veins. I know there's going to be some brighter days. When we feel that all is lost, when we are disappointed in the decisions that have been made changing the course of history like this week, when we feel afraid that we could lose more rights in the future and feel like the disappointments we have are like ashes falling from burning dreams, we have never lived through times like these. It feels like we're trying hard to breathe in the dark. We pray that you would show us that there are going to be brighter days. For those in our congregation who need your healing and those that are facing upcoming medical appointments, we pray that you would give them strength and would help them to not fear. Today we pray for Bill and Robert Deming, David, Alicia, Elizabeth, Howard, Pastor John and Martha, Joyce, Mary, Matthew, Marion, Michael, Paul, Sheila, and Sherman. We thank you for the birth of Amanda Slattery's baby June this week. We pray for those countries in war especially Ukraine, and those countries who were trying to help people hurt by war and are giving them safe harbor. We pray for those in our own country who have been hurt by violence and abuse, those that are excluded and even those who have known pain within our churches, causing them to feel so alone and helpless, leaving them with screams that don't make a sound 
with walls that are crashing down, with hearts that cry too loud all the time. Please, God, help us to know there's going to be some brighter days. Let's join together in the prayer that the, Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Help us to remember, your love is greater than all our fears. Your love is greater than all the darkness we experience. Your love help us to know there's going to be some brighter days. I swear that love will find you in your pain. I feel it in me like the beating of life in my veins. I know there's going to be some brighter days. Amen. God is present in the mountains and in the deserts, in cities and in the countryside in places of horror and in places of peace. God laughs with us, mourns with us, and calls us to work for justice. God calls us to change and grow. God loves us and is with us in every moment of our lives. Let us share our gifts with God through the morning offering. You may make your offering by using the donate link on the church website or by mailing your offering to St. Paul's United Methodist Church. Those who are present in this room may offer their gifts in the plates which our ushers will be passing as they will be delighted to receive your gifts as Molly shares with us her musical offering.
Would you please join with me in the prayer of dedication? Let us pray. God of hope and welcome, we dedicate these gifts of time, money, and prayer to you. Bless us as we share our lives and stories with the world. Help us use all our gifts to make this planet a place of safety and welcome for all of your beloved. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our closing hymn may be found in the Faith We Sing hymnal on page 2208, Guide My Feet. We will sing verses one through three and then six at the end. read all of the announcements that are in your bulletin and in our weekly emails so that you may stay informed about all of the ministry and growth opportunities offered through the church. And because I'm only going to be sharing about half of those with you verbally today. Many thanks to everyone who came out for the trustees' work days this week. Your investment of time, effort, and energy contributes to maintaining these beautiful facilities where ministry takes place. So thank you very much. Remember, we have camp scholarships available for children and youth going to Camp Kazawasco. Their season starts today, right, Jackson? He's headed to camp today. So if you would like to access one of those scholarships, contact Mary Lou Tenney, and she would be happy to help you out. Reverend Joe Allen Tuttle will lead a study on faith in science fiction, the first session of which is this week on June 29th. If you plan to attend and participate, please contact Joe Allen so that we may have the room set up appropriately for your presence. This month's Interfaith Community Dinner will be held on Thursday, June 30th at 6 o'clock at the Al Huda Islamic Center in Lansing. Details are in the bulletin, but if you would like more information, please contact Jamie Breedlove Crouch. Starting next Sunday, we will engage in a summer worship series titled Discipleship by the Sea. We'll encounter Jesus, the man, the prophet, the healer, and the troublemaker as presented in the Gospel of Mark. We will journey with Jesus along the shoreline and in boats as we seek to be the disciples that Jesus has called us to be. You won't want to miss a Sunday, so please plan to be here with us. 
Fellowship time today will be out on the sidewalk. There's plenty of shade. I know it's hot out there, but there is a lot of shade. So please help yourself to some refreshments out there on the sidewalk following worship. This week, the Supreme Court of the United States struck down Roe versus Wade. This is a movement with great significance and import in our nation that will have far-reaching effects. As your pastor, God leads me to offer the following. I am here. I am here if this decision has opened wounds or causes you pain. I am here if you are faced with complex decisions and choices around pregnancy yourself or those that or with those that you love and care about. I am here if you want to offer, if you need someone to offer meaningful support to young mothers and families as they navigate pregnancies and long for their babies that are yet to be born. I am here if you are contemplating how a decision may affect the rest of your life. I am here if you prayed for this decision to happen or if you prayed that it would not. I am here, I will listen, I will pray with you, I will offer you the love of God through Jesus Christ. And I encourage all of us to be here for one another and for the women and the families of our community. No matter how we receive this decision, I pray that we will hear how God is calling us to respond. I also ask that we make a commitment to walk with families, to validate the complexity of their lives and not simply make quick pronouncements or offer simple solutions. As the Church of Jesus Christ, it is our calling and our responsibility to be here for God's people as they, as we, wrestle with all that life contains and point each one to the source of all life, all hope, and all love. Would you please join with me in the responsive benediction, which you will find in your bulletins? The Spirit of God is upon us. By the power of God, the broken shall be healed, the oppressed freed, and those who mourn comforted. The Spirit of God is upon us. Go forth to work and praise, made new by the power of God. Amen.